Famine, a poem for voices. A long rocky finger reaching west into the warm Atlantic current. The Barra Peninsula, a lush feast. Dark green fields, white cloud sky, blue slate ocean. Spreading into a gauze filtered horizon defined by the mountains of Kerry across Kulak Bay. Magpies and gray shouldered crows congregate above peaceful black and white Frisian cattle in small fields divided with hedgerows and ancient stone walls. Colored with brambles, tiny flowered yellow asters, blue gypsy roses, clumps of purple heather, and everywhere growing the brushy shrub of the wild fuchsia. Blood red flowers dripping from slender stalks. The bleeding heart of Ireland. A small red-breasted Irish robin sat nearby, singing, as I stood, a transient visitor, where sheep white-dotted distant hillsides grazing as busy clouds skip shadows across the bay. Ireland was singing her bird song, water music. Daylight swung on the warm morning breeze as I watched, listened. Softly nudging, the whispering wind changed. Suddenly rough, pushing, the clouds drew in, gray and angry. The growing wind whipping the bay white came crying up the hill to me. Almost lost in the changing landscape, a bent old man, gnarled, weather-beaten, eyes the color of lichen-covered rocks, a crooked walking stick held stiff in a calloused hand, a farmer's hand. He stopped, nodding. The wind began, restless, rising, drifting back, coming again, stronger still, threatening, threw back his words as the old man spoke. There, don't you hear it? That sound under the wind's cry? Listen, there, surely now, you hear them? The mumbling voices, the whisperers from under the rocks? Shh, quiet, listen. There again from under the grass, that moaning behind the wind. You must surely hear them now. All the old souls keening for the dead these past hundred more years. You must hear them. They are speaking to you. The restless wind flung his words into the growing storm. Below the churning clouds rolled darkness over the green land. The old man dissolved into the swirling shadows, crawling from under the lush grass ancient rocks, whispering, louder, shouting over the banshee call of frightened gulls blown from the angry sea. Suddenly silent, taking form, the shadows began to speak. Gone from the land are we, left for starvation. Some went to sea, coffin ships they called them. We crawled into the earth to fertile the soil, wet with our tears, we left it soft and green and dying. For us it would not grow the potato, life of the poor. It failed us, rotted into the fields, waiting. A million and more, unmarked, unnamed, damned and dying. We were starving, skeletons asking for a bit of bread and milk, some stir about, anything, weak as we were. We worked for our food. Handouts, they said, were bad for our character. Starving men are poor labor for building useless things. And when they dropped, and dropped they did, in the ditches as they dug them. A fine grave for the free markets of England, which must not be interfered with. Lord Trevelyan sent us Indian corn from America. So hard we had no mills could grind it. We sent his England tons of wheat and oats and barley. Twas only the potato that failed, and twas only the poor what starved. Hungry, weak, and pitiful, a child's cry carried softly in the whispering wind. An old cracked voice singing an ancient lullaby in the old language, telling the story of great heroes of a distant time gives meager comfort. She never made it to three years. Catherine she was after me. 
who never knew a laugh, only crying for the hunger. We died together, the two Catherines, she not three and me past counting. Put in the same box, saved on wood, it being early still in the famine days, few enough, so some was buried. Lord have mercy on the souls of the dead. We went into the ground without a word of comfort, and none could offer a pipe or a bit of snuff for our leaving, nor a coin for the eyes where we lay unconsecrated in the ditch by the churchyard wall. Bridget, my sister off in America, made to a fine big house, sent passage for the others, who never knew it came too late. I was to go to America. Da had a cousin, sent a ticket for the boat. I was to live with him in a place called Boston. Liam went, said he would leave a long line of cops just his way of a joke. I'd have gone for a fireman. It was cops, Irish cops, peelers, what killed me for taking a loaf of bread. Hungry we were, terrible the hunger was. It would be a gift for me ma, a stale loaf of bread thrown out, lying unwanted in the garbage. Weren't even good bread, not like me ma made before. But we were starving and the money had gone to send me to America. Shot me, they did, like a common thief, in the back between the shoulders. Oh, God, at heart. Dumped in a ditch, they laughed. Dirty Irish, they said, and left me to die. Losing two sons broke me, Ma. Coffin ships, they'd called them, used for carrying black slaves to America. The Irish did as well. Liam went into the sea and Ma and me and Ireland rotted with the potato. Twas the same Irish constabulary, Irish cops, and Her Majesty's Hussars, what turned us out the day before the Lord's birth. That's being against the law to tumble houses on Christmas. All sick with the cholera, they knowed only wait for St. Stephen's Day, but his lordship in England decreed dragged us out, tumbled the house, and sent us into the bog to freeze. That's where the bloody landlord left Colin. We were to be married. Oh, I was a laughing last then, with eyes the green of the sea at storm and hair as red as Christmas. Colin dark Irish he was, with a ready smile and strong as a young bullock. We were golden in our youth. We were the future, strong, healthy, alive. We would survive the starving. On the day we were to marry, an egg was needed. The wife wart I no longer remember. Was Colin who were to get an egg? There be a none to be had from the poor. Only the landlord and the churchman had eggs. Off he went like the great hero Finn McCool himself, off to capture an egg for his bride. The cheers of his comrades shine in his glory, Finn's motto echoing as he marched. Three things we live by, truth in our hearts, strength in our hands, and fulfillment in our tongues. We chanted as we sent him off, dumped him in the bog. He stood his ground, run down by the landlord on his horse. He never dropped the egg, found it in his hand. Finn never shed tears for anyone on earth. See that old gateway there? walled up by the ruin of the once proud house, and the window overhead, how it's been bricked over these many years. I never shed a tear. Hung myself on the landlord's gate, that day, my wedding day, where he could see from the window, watch from his bedroom, watch as I swung for days, gently rocking in the breeze, rocking for Colin and me. None would cut me down, Curse them from the grave, I swore. Afraid of me, even dead they were. The landlord sealed me up himself into that wall, bricked over the window, and stayed forever in that once proud house. We all died that day for want of an egg on my wedding day. I watched my family die when there was enough. Took it, the landlords and politicians for rents and taxes. 
Can't interfere with the free markets. Left us the rotting potatoes, locked their doors and hid when we came begging for what we had grown. Called us names and let us die. We ate the wild herbs and flowers, ate next year's seed, stripped the bark from the trees, laid the brown earth bare, ate the very grass that grew on it. We emptied the rivers of fish, ate seaweed, and would have drained the life out of the sea itself if we had known how. And still they died. I did for each as best I could. Fiona, the youngest girl, went first, and Mary, her mother, cried. Then James, our second boy, and Mary, his mother, cried. Then Patrick, the baby, just newly born, and Mary, their mother, stopped crying. She walked the 10 kilometers to the landlord's house, ignored the others huddled by the gate, walked to the front door and began to knock on that huge door. She knocked on that door for four days without rest or stopping. No one, not even Timothy, our oldest boy, her favorite, could make her stop. She knocked loud enough to bring Satan from hell and no one came. We brought home what was left, our hands bloody and broken, eyes hollow, empty. We buried Mary with Margaret, the oldest girl, in a shallow hole in an unmarked place, not having strength to do more. We left them all to rot. Timothy, the last but me, I found with the ducks and swans in the mill pond, gently rocking under the rushes. What no man should live to see we and Ireland, cursed by God, I followed Tim to hell. Suddenly awakened, the storm screamed, howling. Ragged gray clouds dragged painfully across the rock-strewn grass. On the hill, shadows cried out. Drowning the wind to a whimper, they chanted, Listen, we died in the lush green fields. Listen to us. We died where there was plenty. Listen, we died because we were poor. Listen to us, we died because of fear. We died because of greed. We died because of hate. Listen, we died because we could not help ourselves. Listen to us, we died because few would help. The wind moaned softly. Lost souls, clamoring out of the darkness, shouted at the earth, seeking comfort from the storm. We died in America, the red man on our own land, black slaves, Okies, and immigrants. We died in Russia, under the czars, and the communists. We Jews died in Poland and Germany, very efficiently. We gypsies died all over Eastern Europe. We died in Cambodia, in Laos, in Korea, and Vietnam. We died in China, in Tibet, and Mongolia, and Japan. We are dying now in Palestine and Israel, in Iraq and Afghanistan. We are dying everywhere in Africa. The unhappy restless wind stirred again, lifting the grass in waves, Warning, a cold breath rising, insistent, louder, the shadow shouted. We are the weak, the poor, the old, the sick, the men, the women, and the children of the world, and we are all dying. The darkness split open, spilling the sorrow of a thousand years. Lashing out, the storm crashed over the land, shrieking, screaming, driving the banshee coach. Thundering, the frenzied wind swallowed the death hag's unearthly howl. Slipping into a soft moan, the voices chanted their lament. Look at us and remember. Look at want and remember us. Look at fear and remember. Look at greed and remember us. Look at hate and remember. Look at a starving child and remember us. Then it was over. Kulak Bay calm reflected bits of silver. 
Ireland, shifting under sunshine, shadow, lay still, spent and silent.